the main reason I did taxidermy in the project was because I wanted to practice it. But it's just kind of easier to get an authentic looking animal. And it's actually quite cheap because like, all you need is like wire and wood wool and stuff like that and the animal. We both did sculpting and fiberglass moulding with a core so you can sculpt your piece, lay clay in the mould and then remould the inside of that so whatever is clay becomes the skin. And so I think that was the same process for both of us. So for the finer details like on the koala's face and the tiger's muzzle and around the eyes, that's blocked. So there is silicon added to apply the blocking to the face. And then the rest was just making lots of template things for fur and sewing it all together and putting it on. Whereas my tiger was done with making a template in the same way, but that was adding silicon onto the kind of the silicon skin that I've cast and then just kind of pressing it in and stitching it around the edge to secure it. Yes. I stripped down feathers and then I just punched them into the silicon on the face. So I was planning to flock the majority of the face and then add fur panels like Adam did with the rest of the body to the neck and to the top of the head. However, it didn't look that great and I knew I had to fur punch the ears anyway. So basically the entire head from like the back of the crown here, fire punch all the way down. It took me six days. The inside is basically made of hammock stand and a trampoline bar. So it's all fully metal that I drilled holes in and bolted together. Then the head is got the fiberglass core. So bolted that to the armature. So it sort of turned into like an S curve where the neck was and then as it went in there was a trampoline bar that curved all the way in so it swooped down up through the back so then down its leg I could pull a cord and it would go up and down. The wolf itself is like only about this big really. So I sculpted it in monster clay. I ended up heating up a bit of monster clay and then taking a toothbrush and just flicking it up. I don't want the fur to be completely realistic, but I still wanted it to have texture to it. And then I molded it and cast it in primarily fast cast. I was basing mine off of a werewolf from Teen Wolf. So yeah. that's why I went for the wolf, really. The symbolism to the whole piece, but there isn't symbolism to like the animal itself. I say yes. Mine is totally symbolism of a grandparent I lost because she lived in Dalton and it's surrounded by red deer. And I have those memories of going to go see her and then driving around, going to see if we can find the deer. So that makes me think of her. And then yeah. adding the white stag onto it adds a bit more to it because they're just sort of they're mythical wise guardian like and she was seen as a guardian to me because she just looked after me and then sort of was encouraging me to do my work my art she was like do what you want to do because obviously you're good at what you do you just need to do it it's very symbolic to me but it doesn't mean that everyone will get it the whole piece is kind of about duality and like juxtaposition taxidermy itself is a juxtaposition because you're like creating something that's supposed to look alive out of something that's dead it's kind of a symbol of the bearded woman's soul and originally yeah. it was to be a magpie which uh, like are symbols of duality but i couldn't get hold of a magpie so it had to be a J. my koala was gonna have lots of little resin hands coming out of its back this idea that the koala is a god and then these hands coming out of its back are how it kind of interacts with the world and changes it that you don't see. And I picked a white tiger because of how they're inbred, so there was an added kind of cruelty to it because this idea that the person that's caught both of them wants to change the world 
for, for the better, this thing of the ends justifying the means. 